Today we're celebrating with our young people as they recall some of their experiences of sharing the love of Jesus in their many varied circumstances. As you hear their stories, you'll really give thanks to God for our young people and also the adults who work with them in that important ministry. Our mission theme then for today, giving special attention to the youth who are leading us in that. And so the message then has that theme, mission movement, walking in love, walking in love. I like that word walking. It's a word frequently used in both testaments of walking. Walk according to the spirit, walking according to the newness of life. Walking then describing a way of life, a, a, a mission kind of life. Walking is such a basic part of life, isn't it? And it has a special meaning to it also because it's walk. It doesn't then rush, run around, it's walk. That means when we walk, we're attentive to things around us. We're just not rushing around. Walking, you go about four or five miles an hour, they figure. So it's a nice, deliberate way, walking. And it's very popular. We hear a lot about many, many runs. And in school, we even are walkathons. And, the, and the, even the long runs also include a walk. So walking, so basic to our life. And it's significant for me in the sense that that's a promise I face, is I don't walk so good anymore like I used to. I wish I could, because I have many wondering remembrances of walking all over the place, up and down the aisle here, up and down the stairs. So I have a great appreciation for walking and the ability to do so. And I look at all the young people, I say to our grandchildren that too, you appreciate your legs, give thanks for them, take good care of them, because it's so important. So walking, walking. Now, it's not just any kind of walk we're talking about. So in our text it says, walk in love. Walk in love, in love. Love then is both the motivation and the style of our walk we do. The motivation is in our text. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. There is real love. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a wondrous thing he did. While we were yet sinners, disobedient people, Jesus laid down his life on our behalf. We praise God for that, and as we think of walking, too, we can think back to Jesus' sacrifice. We talk that walk that he has. It's called the Via Dolorosa, the walk that he experienced carrying that cross, and he then all the way to, 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 to Calvary. So walk in love as Christ has loved us. That's our motivation. We love because Christ first loved us. Now the walking that we do is also a style of love. It's a style that is set by Jesus. We walk, we live in love as Jesus did. It's a sacrificial kind of walk, a sacrificial kind of love that we do. Did Jesus love us because we're so lovable, because we deserve all kinds of things? Not at all. His love is grace alone. It's a wondrous gift to us beyond our deserving. So, as we walk in love, that style of loving one another, how do we do that? We treat people the same way God treats us. We see them as people who are loved by God. People who are created in the image of God. People who are redeemed by the blood of Christ. Remember that when Jesus was on the cross, that sacrifice was for everybody, no exceptions. So as we see people then, as we respond to people, we look, look beyond just the outward things we see. We really get to the truth. 
to see people as people loved, created by God, redeemed by Christ the crucified. And so that begins right here. Look around you here right now. You saved a lot of people, a lot of familiar people. You see them for who they are. Yes, people redeemed by Christ, loved by the Father. Yes, that's how we are called to see people and serve people, to walk in love toward others, even as Christ loved us. So in our scripture reading, the apostle says, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other as God in Christ has forgiven us. To walk in love, that's our calling. Now, that's a tough challenge, isn't it? Because we look at our lives, it doesn't always happen that way. We don't always treat people that way. So we say, well, that's impossible, isn't it, to make that kind of change? Well, it is impossible if we're going to depend on our own strength. And so it is, we have that confidence that with Christ, all things are possible. So our text is even kind of holds before us how that happens, how that new life happens in our lives. So the apostle says, put off the old self. Take off the old self. That old self we often call the old Adam. That's our sinful condition. And our text describes the symptoms of that. Kind of a slander, a deceitfulness, tearing down others and so forth. Those are the symptoms of that old sinful nature of ours. And you see, those are things we don't go to school to learn. We don't learn them from each other. Jesus is out of the heart, perceived these evil thoughts and murders, immoralities, theft, slander, out of the heart. That's just there. That's the old self. And that's what we deal with. Now, he says, put off that old self. And that's the language of changing clothes. Take off that old clothes. They're stained, soiled garments. Take them off. Take them off. Well, how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, we know. We confront our sins. Honestly, we don't make excuses. We don't blame other people. We don't pretend. We admit our sins as they are. And then we confess them. We get them out. To God, certainly, but also to those who we've sinned against and we've hurt and injured that willingness to confront and confess our own sins and then to claim that wondrous word of forgiveness through Jesus' sacrifice that forgiveness is so full and complete absolute complete and we claim that forgiveness in our own lives now we need to remember though that that old self is like an infection it really doesn't go away it's still there just keep showing itself. So we got to keep confessing, confronting. It's sort of like either brush our teeth or take a bath or shower. Well, we do that once, well, what happens? It decays still. The stain is still there, so we got to wash, wash and scrub. That's the way it goes. That's what we do also with that old self of ours. We got to face it day by day. And then the apostle then says, put on the new man, the new self, the new self. Now, that's, it says created according to the likeness of God. So this new self is not some habit that we can develop. It's not something we produce. That's a gift. It's created. It's given to us by God. And that new self really is Christ. Christ. The apostle says, I'm crucified with Christ. That means our sins have died with Christ. Yet not I. But Christ lives in me. That's the promise we have, that Christ, the same one who lived and died for us, who conquered death, he's with us right now. The Bible even says he dwells in us. That's the new self. That's the new self. And that's God's gift to you and me. It comes to us when we're baptized. It's strengthened in us, just like when we do our physical walking. We need to keep good nourishment, keep it in good shape. So also we need to keep ourselves nourished spiritually. And we do that as we remember our baptism, claim that blessing, to remember and, and re 
and recall that word of God to us, both law and gospel, so that truth of the forgiveness, the peace that Christ gives, that the Holy Spirit keeps reinforcing and strengthening that self, that new self that's in us. And again, that's just not once a lifetime. That's day by day. We nourish ourselves with the word of God and come to the Lord's table here and share in the body and blood of Jesus where Jesus himself dwells in us in a very, very special way. So that's how we go and follow and walk in love. Not by our strength, but through the power of God, Christ in us, the Spirit of God working in us, and nourishing that new self in us. And so the Apostle then, the, those words again of our text, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. We walk in love, and we know that when the, Jesus said, by this shall people know you're my disciples, if you have love for one another, that still what shows. And that's what we work on in a special way as the Spirit of God nourishes us. So, are you ready to walk? Are you ready to keep on walking in love? You know, even when we walk, we sometimes stumble, don't we? And for us people like myself, we dread that thought of falling down. Whoa, that's awful. Well, it is for people of any age. Falling down is an awful thing to go through. And that happens to us spiritually, too. We fall down. We stumble. But as we do so, remember this. We're not alone. Jesus, our Savior, says, I'm your friend. I'm with you. And he's there to lift us up, to lift us up, giving a helping hand so that we can be refreshed and go on a new day. And also, we're not alone because we have each other. We're walking together in love, and we help each other. We correct one another, we encourage one another, we lift up one another, that together then we walk in Christ, walking in that love, even as Christ loved us and gave himself as a sacrifice for each one of us. In his name we say, praise God for all his blessings. Amen.